Yeah. All right, you guys, so this three-fourths, the second one on the R is negative. It's kind of hard to see. It's small. Where, what's a good place to start this one? But what, what of that should we start? All of it. Oh. Pretty much. I would not multiply the 3 by the 81 myself. Why? Can't we just do this to start? And it's because the 81s are not, they don't have a weird exponent. It's just to the first. So yeah, just cancel them out. It looks nicer that way. And then r to the 3 fourths times r to the negative 3 fourths. Remember, we'll just add the powers because they're being multiplied. The bases are being multiplied, so we can add the powers. 3 fourths plus negative 3 fourths is 0. What is anything to the 0 power? Anything to the 0 power is? Uh-oh. It's 1. Anything to the zero power is one. So r to the zero is just one. I'll write it because this is a big deal. You need to make sure you know. So can someone who takes good notes check if we wrote that? It seems like we did, but will you look? Someone who takes good, it feels like you take good notes. No? All right, let's go write it in the notes. Actually, let's finish this example, and then we'll write it in the notes. So this is just 1. So we're down to 3x to the 1 half over x to the 3 halves. And we just subtract 1 half minus 3 halves. So this becomes 3x to the 1 half minus 3 halves, which is negative 2 halves. Which is negative 1, so this just becomes 3 over x. Did anybody get there? You guys kind of have me concerned. We're not that far from doing an assessment on this stuff, and we've done it a whole lot at this point. So, what what are you gonna do to get there? Just curious. I have more. I have a review for that quiz, but anyway. What? No, it'll be on paper. Yeah. I think we should practice. Yeah, Well, we're not practicing this. We're practicing this kind of stuff. The simplifying radicals we had started on OpenStax. And now we're not going to spend the whole time on it. Um, so the problems, let's see. It was these. If you could pull those out and let's go ahead and finish them. Maybe let's check in in 20 minutes. So these are both jailbreak problems, if you want to call them that, where we're pulling out groups of n. And so... To do that with the 192, we need to start by prime factoring it. And it's even, so we can start with dividing it by 2. And then 192, I think, is 96. Thank you. And then 48. All 2 so far. 24, 12, and then 6 down to 3. So our prime factorization is 2 to the 6th times 3. And then we need to pull out groups of how big on this one? 6. 
groups of two. Remember when there's no index shown, oh. it's a square root, so groups of two. And I think there's some of you that should probably write that in there to make sure you don't mess it up. So how many groups of two can I pull out of two to the sixth? How many groups of two? Yep, so two cubes. Uh, the three stays. How about how many groups of two out of t q cubed? How many groups of two out of t q cubed? Good, one group of q, and another q stays in. How many groups of two out of r to the seven? Three. Three, so r cubed with one left inside. Okay, this was an even root and ended in some odd powers. So we need absolute value on the QR. Where did the 8 from? 2 cubed. All right, 97. We can split. It's also a square root. We can split that up. And then square root the denominator. So square root of 64 is 8. And then we need to do 300. I guess we could have simplified first, but I think I'll be okay with it this way. So 300, that's even, but also we can see that 3 goes into it. So I think I'm going to start with the 3 and do 3 and 100. And then... 2 and 50, 20, sorry, 50, 2 and 25, and then 5 and 5. So this has an interesting prime factorization. 300 is 2 squared times 5 squared times 3. So 2 twos, 2 fives, and a 3. All right, so we're pulling groups of 2 out of that numerator. What can I pull out? A group of two, yeah. So, group of two, what else? Group of five. No three, so leave the three inside. And then how many groups of two M's can I pull out of the M to the fifth? How many groups of two M's? Yeah. So m squared, m left over inside. All right, this one has an additional step because 2 times 5 can be simplified with the 8. So we need to reduce that fraction on the outside. And if you want, you can write it as 10 first, but you don't have to. In fact, I'm not going to because we can simplify this to a 4. So the final result is 5m squared, root 3m over 4. So remember to simplify all the way, as far as you can. Hopefully that was a good reminder. Call me over if you need. So just as a quick check on these ones with denominators. Remember that our... Three, we have those three criteria or three <coughs> conditions for reduced radical form. Number one, no powers inside greater than the index. Number two, no denominators in the <coughs> radical, which all three of these have. And then no radicals in the denominator. None of these will after we simplify. So let's go ahead and break this up into a, a radical in the numerator and denominator separately. And then it's a square root, so we say how many groups of 2 comes out of y to the 4th? How many groups of 2 out of y to the 4th? 2 groups, and it's just y squared. How many groups of 2 out of y to the 8th? 4 groups, so y to the 4th. And then we can simplify here y to the 2 minus 4, right? Because it's quotient rules. So y to the 2 minus 4 is y to the negative 2, but we need to rewrite that as 1 over y squared. You could have done that actually at the beginning. 
So let's say you, you saw that quotient property first. So you could have done this, square root of y to the 4 minus 8, which is square root of y to the negative 4, which is the same as square root of 1 over y to the 4th, which is 1 over y squared. Because square root of 1 is 1, square root of y to the 4th is y squared. So you could have done it that way as well. By the way, you're asking me questions of ones that I've done, so you should probably pay attention. Yeah, like before. A little bit ago. Um, how about this one? What should we do with the u's? Should we simplify first, or do you want to square root first? Well, fifth root first. Doesn't really make a difference. I mean, maybe it does to you. If you look at these two methods, which one makes more sense to you? Okay, like, and it doesn't matter to me which one, just pick one so you stay consistent. I would probably guess more of you relate to splitting first, which is totally fine. So five, groups of 5 out of 21, we get 4 groups, that's 20, and then we leave 1 inside. So there's 20, this u to the 4th represents 5 groups, sorry, groups of 5, 4 times, that's 20 u's plus the one left inside. And then this one, how many groups of five come out of 11? That's two with one left inside. Okay? The root u cancels. It's the same thing, top and bottom. So we can just divide it off. And then we get u to the fourth over u squared. Again, that's four, u to the four minus two, which is just u squared. So notice, hopefully you notice, that we're not only doing radical simplifying, but we're also incorporating our exponent rules as well. And that's typical. So it's not like we separate and only do rational exponents and then only do radicals. These overlap because it's very much the same stuff. And then here, let's do this one the other way. b to the 30 over b to the 12 is v to the 30 minus 12 inside there. And so that's v to the 18. How many groups of 18, of 6 can I pull out of 18? 3. So that one may be easier doing it the other way. Just depends. Um, we did need to go back and ask about, only on this first one, about absolute value. Do I need an absolute value anywhere in that result? No, because we have an even power. Even though we started with an even root, so it's square, a 2, we ended with an even power, and so it will be positive. We don't need to force it to be positive. Okay. Any others that we can talk about or check? Which one? 97. 97, okay. Yeah, we did 97. I'll put it up here. It was right there. So split up your radical, root the 64 to get 8, and then split up 300, you get 3, 2 squared, and 5 squared. So you can pull out a, a 2, a 5, the three stays, and then two groups of M. And then the last thing you need to do is simplify uh, the 2 and the 8. You can either do it as 2 and 8 or 10 and 8, either way. Yeah. All right, any others? What? Let's get hers first. All of them? Just B. Just B. Okay, so 103B. This time, let's split them up first. 
What happens when you cube root a cube? Yeah, it's like how many groups of three can I pull out of three? It's just one group. And let's, at the same time, let's go do our 54 uh, prime factorization. So it's even. So we'll get 2 and 27, and then 3 and 9, and then 3 and 3. So the prime factorization is 3 cubed times 2 for that 54. So this next line, I'm going to rewrite two things. So this will become 3 squared, or 3 cubed times 2, a to the 8. And this will become just b in the denominator. Okay, well, how many groups of 3 can be pulled out of 3 cubed? One group. So 3 comes out. 2 stays in. Let me make room for our A. How many groups of 3 can I pull out of 8? <coughs> 2 groups of 3, so A squared, and A squared inside to represent 2 left over. And that's over B. Anything else we can do? Nothing here. Uh, but we took, actually this was a cube root, so we don't need to worry about parentheses at all. Not parentheses, absolute value. Does that help? Okay. Nevaeh, what was yours? Good enough. That was good enough? Okay. Okay. Any others? Any others? Okay. So just keeping, I want to keep this plan or this, like what we're going to be doing in front of you. I want you to imagine having a problem like this one. And then let's say that's number two on your test. And then your next one, like number three, whatever, maybe is one of these kinds. Something like that. So can you switch back and forth? You know, it's not super unrelated. It's not like it's entirely different, but you'll need to be able to switch back and forth in terms of how you do that. Like in thinking. Uh, we're, and also, we're going to add a bunch more stuff. Uh, it's not just these two. We're going to add multiplying, dividing, and adding and subtracting to it as well. Um, let me show you a little bit on the multiplication. Let's sort of start getting into that so you guys, you'll have to look up nodes, but so you kind of have an idea. So product, we'll start with. Quotient means divide. We'll, we'll do that probably tomorrow as well. What do you think? If I asked you to multiply those, what do you think you would do? Okay, so you're suggesting to get rid of the radical. What did you say over here? Throw it into a You could. <laughs> you could throw it into a calculator until those are letters, which they will be. Is there a nice fifth root of 16? No. No? How about 8? No, so we can't turn them into whole numbers first. That would be awesome. Uh, but notice the direction. What is and then it shows a multiplication problem in reduced radical form. So our directions aren't going to change much. It's just a different a given problem, like the initial problem is set up slightly different. So our goal is still to make sure we have no powers under the radical that are greater than n, no denominators in the radical, no radicals in the denominator, just like it was before. So I'm going to tell you this is considered like a basic version, and that's because the index is the same for both. Because the index is the same, we can just multiply what's underneath. So in this case, it's going to be, we can combine them. It's like reversing the, ra the radical property, product property that we wrote the other day. So we can reverse that and just combine those by multiplying inside. And then we want to put that product in reduced radical form. So tell me about 16 and 8. 
we could just multiply them. But what if we wrote those as prime factor, prime factors, so like that instead? Then I don't have to go use a calculator because I can write this as 2 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd, which becomes what? Using your exponent properties. I don't know. Yep, add the exponents, so this becomes 5th root of 2 to the 7th. Now we can say, how many groups of 5 can I pull out? One group, so this becomes 2, 5th root of 2 squared, which is 4. So 2, 5th root of 4 is how that one would go. So again, let's kind of review steps. As long as the index is the same, we can multiply what's underneath. Probably better to do it in prime factored mode, but not necessary. And then pull out groups from there. Yeah. What would you do if you did just multiply them? Like, okay. Uh, is that 16 times 8? Sure, yeah. Let's just, I'll just do it so we don't mess it up. Yeah, okay, so he's saying, what if you hadn't done this prime factoring version? So, let's say you just multiplied and got 128. So you would still want to go do your prime factoring from here, right? So, at this point, it would look like 2 and 64, 2 and 32, 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then you're back there. So either way, it's okay. The only thing I'm telling you is that you won't be able to do this on a calculator. So the 16 times 8, you're going to have to be able to either do like elementary school, like that, or do it in your head because you're not going to use a calculator to do that part. So if you could keep it in prime notation, that would be better, but not necessary. So either way is good for me. Um, let's look at another one. Give that one a shot, knowing what I just told you. It's 5 times the square root. So we're trying this one because the previous one had different indexes. So, yeah, this is 5 times square root, so it's still second root. So these do have the same index. Since they have the same, we can bring everything inside of 1, and we can write it like this. a cubed times a times b to the fifth times b times 4, that 5 just stays out front, it's not involved with the radical at all. Now we use our properties, our product property of exponents, which tells us to do what with the a and b exponents? Add them. So we get a to the 4th, b to the 6th, and I should put that 4 in the front. Now what? Now we break out groups, right? How many groups of 4 or 2 can I pull out of 4? So that is 2 groups of 2. Or 1 group, you get what I'm saying. Um, how many groups of 2 can I pull out of A to the 4th? And B to the 6th? That's a B. And then we just need to come, like multiply these. So 10A squared B cubed. Okay, so we'll pick up with that, but the more complicated cases when their index doesn't match, we'll write some notes on this tomorrow.